NVIDIA has a few new graphics cards, and the most exciting thing about them is you might actually be able to buy them for close to the retail price. Welcome to another Upscaled Mini. We are trying more of these shorter newsy type episodes, and today I am here to talk to you about NVIDIA's 3080 Ti. The graphics card market has been a mess for the last year. The combination of COVID-related supply chain issues along with the ongoing semiconductor shortage that we talked about in our recent Intel episode, and crypto surging so much that people realized you could actually make some money with just a GPU and Ethereum, has all added up to make buying a graphics card at anything close to retail price almost impossible. Add in the fact that AMD's much anticipated 6000 series GPUs have just been okay and also impossible to find, and Nvidia was already pricing GPUs a little higher than we felt was reasonable, but scalpers and shortages have driven those numbers into the stratosphere. We grumbled a bit about the 3080 launching at $699, but looking around now, it is hard to find those cards for less than $2000. Heck, the flagship 3090 seemed like a joke when it launched at $1499, but now almost a year later, with my aging Radeon 7 card starting to produce some inexplicable glitches and hiccups, and I would kill to buy one at MSRP. Into this less than stellar market, Nvidia is launching a pair of their new high performance TI series cards, the 3080 TI and 3070 TI. These cards not only promise improved performance, but also come with a few tweaks that may help keep them in the hands of gamers, not crypto miners. First up is the 3080 Ti, which is essentially just a slightly cut down version of that flagship 3090. The 3080 Ti has 10,242 CUDA cores, which is Nvidia's name for its graphics processing units, down only 256 from the 3090's 10,496. It also loses just a few of those graphics enhancing ray tracing and AI based tensor cores. The biggest change is the memory, which gets cut in half to just 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X at a bandwidth of 912 gigabytes a second. This is slightly slower than the 3090's 936 gigabytes a second, but a big improvement from the 3080's 760. That's kind of the theme with the 3080 Ti. It is much closer to that flagship 3090 than it is to the base 3080. But unfortunately, that is also true of the price, with the 3080 Ti launching at $1,199. Despite costing twice as much as the base 3080, the 3090 was generally only about 10% faster in games. And in product Productivity software, where that big 24 gigabytes of graphics memory should really make a difference, in the best case scenarios you generally saw about a 25% performance improvement, and sometimes almost no improvement at all. Our editor Devendra Hardwar in his testing saw the 3080 Ti scoring about 10-15% to faster than the base 3080 in most games and benchmarks. For example, in the Port Royal ray tracing benchmark, Dev got a score of just under 60 FPS, compared to the 63 or so frames per second that other reviewers have found for the 3090. There is still a big question about how this card will perform in high-end rendering applications. I mean, these types of programs tend to really favor lots of graphics memory, but again, the base 3080, which only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, usually scored within striking distance of its $1,500 sibling. And despite only having 12 gigabytes of graphics, memory, I'd expect the 3080 Ti will be scoring much closer to the 3090 than to the base model. If the 3080 Ti is starting to look a lot like a slightly cheaper 3090, well the 3070 Ti looks a bit like a more expensive 3070, with only 6144 CUDA cores up from 5888. We'll have more details in a full review soon, but with an expected launch price of $599, it looks like the 3070 Ti may be living in a weird gray area, where it's not much faster than the cheaper 3070, and only a bit less expensive than the much faster 3080. As far as I'm concerned, if you want the absolute best performance, the 3080 Ti looks to be cheap enough that it renders the more expensive 3090 functionally obsolete. But that said, for 99% of gamers and content creators, the much cheaper base 3080 still seems like the best choice. But what about actually getting any of these cards into the hands of the people who want them? These new GPUs are going to be sold hash limited, which means their ability to run the types of math that are used to mine crypto has been crippled. Now, this shouldn't affect their performance in most other domains, but hopefully it will make them a little less enticing to miners. I appreciate the attempt, but I also don't have a ton of faith that these tweaks will actually relieve shortages. For one, Nvidia's first attempt at a hash limited card, the 3060, was 
kind of a disaster. And also, there's just so much pent-up demand that I expect these new TI cards are still going to be pretty appealing to eBay scalpers for a while. There's also the fact that while these cards may have been tweaked to make them less great at crypto mining, NVIDIA has also announced they will be selling a new line of cards made specifically for crypto mining. Now, while some of those are based on older models, the upcoming HX90 is in fact based on the same GPU used in the 3080, the 3080 Ti, and the 3090. The HX90 isn't on sale yet, but once it's actually available, it'll be coming from that same limited manufacturing supply as these other cards. The cynical part of me thinks that this isn't actually about helping gamers. By selling these crypto-specific cards that can't be used for gaming in most other applications, when the crypto market inevitably dips and miners sell off their rigs, Nvidia avoids a glut of secondhand cards hitting the used market. And by installing these hash limiters on these new cards, it if gamers look to upgrade, they maybe have a less enthusiastic secondhand market for those older gaming cards. That said, I hope this plan really does work perfectly and puts an end to the shortages because I am ready to upgrade. My Radeon 7 has served me well, and it still runs pretty well in DaVinci Resolve, but all I want to be able to do is play Control with full ray tracing settings. Give me those shiny, shiny tile floors. Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to check out the full review on our site for all of the benchmarks and details. Stay tuned and we'll catch you next time.